in Game 3, Adam Cummings versus Alex Zorowski. This is our first actual look, though, at the green-red builds of Eldrazi. And so to break down the board, both 14 and 13 are the life totals. Zorowski has a 4-4 Endless One, a Matter Reshaper, and a World Breaker in play. Cummings, Thought Not Seer, and Reality Smasher. World Breaker is larger than both of those creatures, and it looks like it took a land with it on its way into play. So it seems quite good in these Eldrazi mirrors. Yeah, the Zorowski deck, in case you're running the green-red, what it's for, the green is for four copies of World Breaker, four copies of Ancient Stirrings, and then red is four copies of Kozlex Returns. Remember, you can find off of Ancient Stirrings. So I would, I would assume that Alex is just excellent against Affinity. Yeah, and the interesting thing about Kozlex Return, the first casting against the Eldrazi Mirror, often not very good, maybe taking an Eldrazi Mimic with it. But it, when you're casting World Breaker, you have a 5-7. You would kill the Thought Nuts here and the Reality Smasher for Cummings here. Actually, really interesting implications on the uh, Graveyard trigger. Three lands, or two lands at least in hand for, for Zorowski. He has size on the board, World Breaker, bigger than both Thought Nut and Reality Smasher. Still not a good attack into those two creatures, though, because he would only be able to take one with it on the double block. Look at the mana he has in play. Zorowski to cast that world breaker, able to do it, I believe, off four lands. Get the same number of lands required to cast Drowner of Hope. He just gets a seven drop. Casting seven drops off four lands, that's, that's Tron size numbers, except he gets to cast big things on the way up. It's a little bit behind Tron. Yeah. Tron only needs three lands. Right, but they don't get to do anything until then. Yeah, that's, that's true. A, you know, big drop. <laughs> so they don't have any uh, potential 5-5s five on turn one? Yeah, you know, 4-4, four, four, turn two, then I'll play my 7-drop. World Breaker will swing in. Adam can double block. That second ability on World Breaker is going to matter here. Zorowski's actually flooded, so this is very potent. It, it discourages Adam from blocking in a big way. Right, it'll just come back. On the way back, It's it would destroy that Ayabugan. And then Cummings is pretty far from actually playing Magic. If he double blocks, Zorowski will start a card advantage war. He'll get a card off Thought Not Seer. He'll have the opportunity to get back his World Breaker. Given those two things, can, can Adam block here? It's really tough. Um, so on 14, it does take three cracks to kill him. But something like Reality Smasher off the top or giving Zorowski time to draw a dismember and make that block even worse is problematic. But uh, Cummings doesn't really have good attacks here either. Right, he can, I mean, if he's not blocking the World Breaker, he's saying he either needs to race or play a value game, right? Mm. And this is kind of his decision as to which one he wants to do. I don't know if I particularly like either plan, but Cummings is picking now. One thing that the Blue-Red Eldrazi deck has going for it, uh, I will say that Cummings needs one more mana source to do it, but the Mirror Breaker for Blue-Red is not just Runner of Hope, they also have Eldrazi Obligator. So another oh, mana okay. source, Obligator, Threaten the 4-4. Suddenly we're attacking for 16, 5 of a Trample. If we uh, block the 4-4 with the Reshaper, what is that? That's still... Yeah, so you're feeling like the right place to race here. If we have draws like Obligator and Drowner. And that's what Cummings chooses. He takes 5. Post-combat, all Zorowski has is a Mind Stone. So... Yep, and uh, Cummings didn't see any other action when he saw the hand with the Thought Not Seer. So I like the not blocking here. Uh, you're really just not losing by blocking. You're not winning. Here's a free Eldrazi Mimic from Cummings. Can he race back? He's got some difficulties here. He doesn't really want to trade away that Thought Not Seer and give Zorowski a card if he doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. See, fourth land is another Shivan Reef. So that's five mana available. You see, he... In case you're wondering well, how he cast that Reality Smasher, you see over in Exile there, there's an Eldrazi Temple, World Breaker, taking out one of Adam's land sources. Right. The Green Red Eldrazi deck figures, I, from what I've heard players, it's, it figures it is a dog against blue-white. It's better against Affinity in the regular Eldrazi deck. And talking with Sam Black, one thing he was impressed by, he believes this deck is actually, the Green Red Eldrazi deck is a favorite against Lantern Control, which Sam does not believe about blue-white. Right, the World Breaker makes a huge difference there. Um, the ability to just destroy in Staring Bridge by casting a spell. Also, if you just mill it with any of the mill effects to put it in the graveyard, you can return it uh, by sacrificing a land. And a huge draw from Zorowski. The race turned and turned on its head as he top decks another World Breaker, exiling Adam Cummings' Eye of Ugin and knocking him down to just three mana sources. 
Turns out Reality Smasher is not the only aptly named Eldrazi. Yeah, World Breaker. We're not, at the, we're not at the big boss Eldrazi, but we're getting more mythic when we get up to World Breaker. And one will take care of the, the eye, the other one swings in. Now, Adam, maybe he cannot reasonably race anymore. Right. He lost access to his mana sources. Also, with more creatures in play, that Obligator is significantly worse on this board. If you threaten a creature, now there's two blockers back on defense. So one thing to... Yeah. Take goes down to five. Adam does have a replacement to Ayavugan, so he goes back up to five mana. Still not in range of a Drowner of Hope. And it's feeling to me like Drowner of Hope is, is the card he'll need to win this game. Right. So there is an Obligator, but... It might be too late here. Yeah, he'll uh, play Obligator. He'll take the untapped Reality Smasher from Zorowski. He will, he will obligate it to work for him. Yeah, so the math checks out if uh, all the creatures attack, Alex throws his creatures in front of the World Breaker and the Thought Not Seer. We get in for uh, 11 total with the Mimic, the Obligator, and the Reality Smasher. Uh, so if Zorowski blocks the two biggest. Right, he survives that two life with that block. And, of course, cracks back for lethal. All right, so given that Adam can't actually swing all out this turn, but maybe he can get some incremental damage, and certainly the stolen World Breaker is attacking. Right. You're talking about how Obligator can swing these races. Now, is there a chance, can Adam set up a board where he swings this turn, and then another Obligator off the top wins? So you attack with the World Breaker. Presumably, Zorowski just goes down to eight. Yeah, that seems pretty reasonable. Right. No sense in throwing away creatures if Sarasi's trying to set up a lethal attack next turn. Mm -hmm. it, it seems unlikely that Zarowski would be attacking with more than just one World Breaker, unless, of course, something like a Reality Smasher off the top okay. happened. So, so Adam can chump, and then if he draws a, an Obligator or a Drowner of Hope, maybe he's fine. Yeah. This, is, this game is not over yet, unless Adam attacks with too many creatures. I think that that's the only way that this game really ends on this turn. Yeah. So may, we'll... We'll see if we see a more conservative attack from Adam Cummings. Seems to me that's what you're fa you favor here. Just yeah. chip shotting. Then he needs to find. Is it? It's just Drowner and Obligator. Those are the cards he'll need to then win the race. Right. So you absolutely send in the World Breaker, and yeah, I, I think I like the Reality Smasher as well, presuming that it, that it doesn't just leave him dead on the crackback. Well, it shouldn't. This does leave him dead to a removal spell if he swings both of these. Right, you'll have exactly three blockers against four creatures, two of which are lethal, and the other two combined are lethal. Right, so if there's only two blockers, then two creatures get through no matter what Adam dies. So this attack will put Zorowski very low, presumably dead to a number of things. But a removal spell will get rid of Adam, will, will win the game for Zorowski. Now, Green Red Eldrazi doesn't play as much removal. It doesn't have Dismember. Well, it has some Dismember, but if he puts him down to three, Alex can't cast the Dismember. Right. Cummings revised his position. Chose to hang back with the Smasher. And we see Matter Reshaper chumping the World Breaker. The card it reshaped into was a Reality Smasher. That went into Zorowski's hand. When we go back to Alex's turn. He will once again regain his control of his World Breaker. Draws another card. What does he have now? We know there's a Smasher in his hand. It's still looking like he's probably in a position just to attack with one World Breaker. I think he has two Reality Smashers. That could change that math. So uh, that, that Ivugan's worth four mana in that situation. That would be four lethal creatures against four blockers. It is. With, if, with that Eldrazi Temple, he can actually cast two Reality Smashers this turn. Ivugan's gross. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? So, uh. Just double checking. I think he knows it. Yeah, he has enough. Seething, he has more than enough. He has 11. Currently, Seething Song is banned in modern for the ability to jump from 3 to 5. Yep. Here's Smasher. Here's another Smasher. And Alex will smash. <laughs> Adam says, Come at me, bro. Alex obliges. 
So there's at least the smallest creature is a 4-4. Four, four. So Adam's going to 1. And with two 5-5 five, five tramples, Adam cannot suck up all the 5 trample from both of them. So one of them will trample over for 1. This is a lethal attack. This should be a win for Alex Zorowski. And Adam knows it. A handshake. And Alex with Green Red Eldrazi takes the win. The heroes, Green Red, Red, Green Red Eldrazi, triumph over the menace of Blue Red Eldrazi. <laughs> now it's a matter of which colors you like more. Right. Yeah, I guess I'm the blue-red guy, so this is pretty bad for me. 